Brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that shares your values. More information is available at CharityMobile.com. I've got a fun story for you today. Well, maybe not fun, but certainly eye-opening. And really, it's two stories that are part of a larger picture. What is approved of in Rome and what isn't? Often, the Bergolians in Rome will feign outrage, shock, or disappointment at the alleged misdeeds of other Bergoglians and will often conduct fake investigations into their misdeeds, and even levy fake punishments, only to have them lifted later when things have cooled down. And while I am not ready to throw Cardinal Wheelight into that camp until the formal investigation into him is concluded, we now have news of one of the more notorious figures in Francis Church, who had been punished for his, we'll just call them serious financial misdeeds, getting his punishment suddenly lifted. And he's been restored, or will be, in time for the coming consistory that's this week. Even better, or perhaps even worse, we have the story of two priests who have been punished for their orthodoxy by Francis personally. The time for excusing Francis for his defense of wicked men and smashing the faith and punishing good priests is long since past. Let's start with Francis rewarding a corrupt prelate for a job well done, or at least an allegedly corrupt prelate. When I go over this story, remember that numerous outlets have reported that the Vatican is hurtling towards financial ruin and looking for ways to generate revenue to weather the storm of bad publicity, angry trads who give money at higher rates than everybody else, and bad economic conditions. With that in mind, headline from Union Sarda di IT. The Pope telephones bet you, come to the consistory. The Cardinal Patata reinstated in his functions. If you're not familiar with Cardinal Giovanni Angelo Becciu, he was the cardinal behind a lot of the uh, financial scandals and bad news plaguing the Vatican in the last year. In July of last year, Becciu testified as part of his trial for a $421 million fraud case in a secular court, which might be a historic first. Now he's being invited to participate in the coming consistory, which is how mainstream Catholic outlets are reporting. The real scoop from comes from Union Sarda, an Italian outlet which ran the headline I quoted a moment ago. Becciu is about to have all of his privileges of the office of cardinal restored in a move that can only be, be Francis showing public support for the cardinal, if Union Sarda's sources are correct. I think they are. From the article, quote, in the coming days, Angelo Becciu will be fully reinstated in his role as cardinal at the behest of Pope Francis to announce the sensational turning point, as revealed first of all by the Charta Bianca newsletter, news later confirmed by authoritative sources also to Union Sarda, was also the same cardinal from Patata involved in the investigation into the use of funds from the Pietro, in particular for the purchase of a luxury building in London. All right, so then they hear, they quote Cardinal Betchew himself. These are his words. On Saturday, the Pope telephoned me to tell me that I will be reinstated in my cardinal functions and to ask me to participate in a meeting with all the cardinals to be held in the next few days in Rome. That's the consistory, folks. There is a consistory coming to make new cardinals. The words that Betchew spoke yesterday morning during a private mass celebrated in front of a group of faithful in Golfo Aranchi, where he is spending a few days on vacation. This is why next Sunday, he added, I will not be able to be present at the Mass, since I am busy in Rome. Apparently on a Thursday, Betchew will board a plane that will take him to the capital towards Vatican City, and there he will take part in the consistory. Now, he has already re- received formal convocation, meaning an invitation to the event itself. He's received a formal convocation for the proclamation of the new cardinals, including Monsignor Arrigo Miglio, Archbishop Emeritus of Cagliari, set for Saturday, 27th of August, end quote. So here's what's critical here. Betchew's trial is still ongoing, and he says he's innocent, of course, and he says he can prove it in court, and that's fine. Maybe he is, though the evidence recounted against him is pretty staggering. But it's worth noting that many have said, knowledgeable observers have said that they think that Betchew is actually the fall guy for bigger fish in the Roman Curia and their misdeeds. Either way, pay attention to the Betchew story because his trial has been going on now for more than a year, which means it must be getting close to wrapping up. But Betchew has been allegedly linked to the infamous London luxury condo story and the funding of that Elton John movie, Rocket Man, where, alleged as it's alleged, money was used from lay donations and Peter's Pence, 
which understandably made people quite angry to fund those, those projects the church shouldn't be involved in at all. This is the second high-profile prelate that has been in hot water with secular authorities that Francis has signaled his support for in the past week, the first being Cardinal Mark Ouellette of Canada, whose guilt or innocence does remain to be seen. Now, there are very few people who think Betchew's hands are clean in all of this. Francis summoning him for the consistory is a big deal, and it shows where his allegiances and priorities are. But there's that other story, the story of, well, unfortunately, two priests dismissed from their posts in Rome for being too rigid, too traditional. The first of the stories about these two priests comes from Gloria TV, who ran the headline, Hatred of the Mass, Francis Personally Forced Monsignor Schroeder to Resign. So what was Monsignor Schroeder's sin? Being open to the traditional liturgy, even on rare occasions. From that article, quote, Schroeder had been promoted at the CDF's disciplinary section on May 7th because of a strong record of handling Ted McCarrick-type cases of the English language desk. As an aside, it's kind of sad that they have to have multi-language desks for that problem. Anyway, but for Francis, ideology counts, not competence. According to CatholicNewsAgency.com, Prefect Ladaria called Schroeder in, apologized, and hinted that the decision came, quote, from above, meaning Francis. Schroeder had occasionally celebrated Mass for pilgrims in Rome, never after the July 2021 publication of the infamous Guardians of Trash Cans, end quote. Even on rare occasion, offering the Apostolic Mass makes you persona non grata in Rome these days. That is a simple, undeniable fact. The other priest stood up for the traditional morality of the church against the onslaught of the uh, James Martin activism and has been exiled to the hinterlands for his sins. I mean, this, in the long run, this will be a blessing for him, especially if things continue to get worse in mainland Europe. Headline from the eponymous flower. Purge and reorganization at the CDR, and I think that meant CDF. The case involves a priest who worked at the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, who is most responsible for answering questions about whether the church can bless James Martin pairings. I remember reporting on that last year, and people took it to mean that Francis was still orthodox on some issues, and I know why people want to think those things. Well, reality comes in from their article, quote, Our sources at the highest level confirm, according to the traditional site Mesa in Latino, that Monsignor Vicioli was dismissed because he was associated with Monsignor Giacomo Morandi, who was also promoted from Rome. Monsignor Morandi was appointed secretary of the congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith in 2017. It's a bit of irony that this involves that congregation, by the way, at the same time as Vicioli. Last January, he was abruptly deported from Rome when Pope Francis appointed him the new Archbishop of Reggio Emilia and Gustavo. His position was not filled because Francis reformed the congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith in February by merging into, into two sections and appointing a separate secretary for each. If you remember that story, the people in charge of those are now are extremely modernist. Continuing, Archbishop Morandi had been dismissed on charges of having written the famous response against the blessing of James Martin Parings of March 15, 2021. In it, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith stated the impossibility of blessing a form of sin. With this negative answer, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith opposed the, uh, we'll call it the bridge-building heresy, which is mainly run by James Martin-style priests, from the German-speaking area, supported by some bishops. Too many bishops, frankly. Pope Francis then left his own congregation for the doctrine of the faith out in the rain so as not to deal with the German bishops' conference, who were quite honestly upset about this, and to create the, the James Martin-style lobby. Santa Marta has the dead house that Francis stays in, distance itself from the response immediately after the publication, and Monsignor Morandi was just as quickly named a possible candidate for the Bishop's See of Turin. His days in Rome were numbered. End quote. This story's not going away. I suspect I'll have more of these stories to report on in the coming months and years as Francis tightens his grip on Rome and, by extension, the rest of the church to make room for more virtual apostates in the hierarchy. This will get especially interesting soon, given that Bet the Betchew case has been going on since before his trial, by, for several months at least. My first Bet You video was in October 2020, almost two years ago, to give you an idea. Combine this with the ongoing Cardinal Ouellette saga, which has been going on itself for a couple of years now, and given that both of those stories are picking up steam, 
things ought to be getting interesting in the Roman Curia, especially if they continue to dismiss good and decent priests for doing evil things like standing up for the traditional liturgy and defending the same faith that our grandparents had, even if they do it in small ways, or for defending the actual moral teachings of the faith against the incursions of the James Martin Brigade. We can and we should expect more of this, especially as rumors begin to swirl of yet another anti-apostolic mass action being taken by Rome soon. I've heard that from multiple sources who are all in the know. Enough of that, though. We'll find out for sure soon. I'm curious what you think about this. In the case of Betchew and the two priests, is it an example of hypocrisy or the real things that Francis values getting his attention? Does he honestly not care about the misdeeds of Betchew? Do you think Betchew is innocent? Or does Francis think Betchew is going to just get off scot-free? Clearly, Francis isn't interested in protecting priests who defend Catholic orthodoxy in any meaningful way. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.